The topic is go deeper. Hallelujah. Go deeper. Turn to your neighbor and say, go deeper. Go deeper. You know, you can be a member of the kingdom of God and you can be deep. And then you can go deeper. And then you can go deepest. Hallelujah. Don't just stay just on the top. Dive in. You know, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, some people prayed for me, and I went down the floor, and then it was like I was underwater. I was literally underwater. And they were praying and prophesying, and it sounded like... It's like they were talking above the water. I was underwater. Hello. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was a real experience. Hallelujah. Did you know there is more? Wow. There is more. Do you know Christianity was never meant to be a religion? It's never meant to be a religion. It was meant to be, it is, a relationship with God the Father. Through the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection and by the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's meant to be a relationship, an encounter, being filled with the Holy Spirit. There is more, so much more. Jesus said in Luke eleven nine. So I say to you, ask. People say to me, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? And I say, ask. Just ask. Turn to your neighbor and say, ask. It's that simple. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Everyone say ask. ask. To all those who ask him. I remember it was about 1992. So that's 32 years ago. I, was, I remember... It was a Sunday morning before church. I was sitting in my office and I asked. I said, Lord, I want to receive the gift of prophecy. Gift of prophecy. I asked. I didn't feel anything. And then I began to praise him that I had, because I had asked and he said, ask and you shall receive. I began to praise him and thank him that I'd now received it. I didn't feel anything. But after that, prophecy began to flow. And the Lord would identify this condition and that condition and begin healing people. Ask and it shall be given to you. Some of you don't ask for enough. Some people, they have a very small concept of who God is. I remember one person saying, well, I don't want to ask too much because there are many other people asking God. As if God could not cope with another prayer request. Sometimes 
I get a lot of prayer requests and I can't cope, but he can. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Why do we need more of the Holy Spirit? Why did Jesus send us the promise of the Father? Why do we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit satisfies our longing for God. Is anyone thirsty for God here? Anyone thirsty for God here? Yeah. He satisfies the longing of the soul. He is the water of God to the soul. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit is our connection with heaven. Are you with me? Just going to church and praying does not give you a connection. Heaven is a different realm. You're on earth and heaven is there. How are you going to connect between you and heaven? It's the Holy Spirit who connects us. It's the Holy Spirit who applies the blood of Jesus to cleanse the heart from sin. It's the Holy Spirit who is our spiritual connection between our spirit and God. Stephen, it says in Acts 7.55, he being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. He wasn't looking at the stars or the sky. He was looking directly into heaven. Full of the Holy Spirit, gazed, looked into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Because he gives us advice that you need in life. He counsels us. Without the Holy Spirit, we are foolish people. We don't know what to do, where to go. We make mistakes. We make stupid decisions. The Holy Spirit advises us. He is our counselor. He gives us counsel. Have you ever had counsel from the Holy Spirit? Give me a wave. Have you ever been counseled by the Holy Spirit? One day, I was about 16 years of age. I was riding my push bike. I was riding my bicycle. Anyone got a bike? And I was riding my bike and I was going to change lanes. I was going to change lanes. I was just about to change lanes and God shouted at me, Stop! Like that. <laughs> and a huge truck <laughs> went past me. I would have been a squashed tomato, squashed mark. God saved my life. Hallelujah. Good advice. Stop. Praise God. He gives us understanding. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord, the Bible says in Isaiah 11 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon Jesus. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. When you come to Jesus, the spirit of God is upon Jesus. You come to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus. They are one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they're one. To know the Holy Spirit is to know Jesus. The Holy Spirit is 
the spirit of wisdom, understanding, discernment, counsel, knowledge, the fear of the Lord that rests upon Jesus. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus said that we need a helper. We need help. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need help. You need help. That's why most of you are here. You need help. I can't help you. I'm just a human being. But the Holy Spirit can help you. Jesus said in John 14, 16, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Wow. Jesus went to the Father, right? But when he sent his Holy Spirit, he has come to us. The Spirit and Jesus are one. We are not orphans. He will never leave us nor forsake us. You know, I grew up in Sydney. When I was 18, I decided to move to Chicago to study. When I got to Chicago to study, I had a big question. Is God here in Chicago like he was in Sydney? Is God here on the other side of the world? <laughs> Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I can testify wherever you go in the world, the Holy Spirit will go with you. Amen? Amen. You know, nothing happens in the kingdom of God without the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why you need him. He is the connection point between you and the kingdom of God, between you and God. You cannot pray effectively without the Holy Spirit. You cannot be born again without the Holy Spirit. You cannot be sanctified, cleansed without the Holy Spirit. You cannot testify and preach the gospel without the Holy Spirit. You cannot do the works of the kingdom, of healing, of deliverance, prophecy, without the Holy Spirit. You cannot do anything in the kingdom without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does nothing apart from the Word of God. This is his sword. The Word and the Spirit are one. The Spirit of God is like the DNA of the Word. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. You cannot receive the life and power of the Word of God without the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, wake up. You need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, he brings power. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. In Ezekiel 47 verse 2, Ezekiel is taken in a vision by an angel... And he sees water 
a massive river flowing out from the temple. And the angel takes him and he begins to walk him through the river. And this is what it says. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters. The waters came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 cubits and brought me through the waters, and the waters came up to my knees. Again he measured 1,000, brought me through the water, and came up to my waist. Again he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. He said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then, listen to this, then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. But Jesus came and John the Baptist said, here comes one. I'm not worthy to untie the sandals, the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. He will take you into the river of God and he will go past your waist and your head will go under and you will be baptized. The promise was not there in the Old Testament with Ezekiel. Ezekiel could not go swimming in the river yet. But we can swim in the river of God. Hallelujah. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Remember, the Holy Spirit is not only power, but he is a person. Wisdom, counsel, understanding. He's a person. He can give you help and understanding. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? By faith, ask and you shall receive. Special type of asking. When you ask, believe that what you have asked for, you have already received and it shall be yours. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us. Remember when Jesus died on the cross, he became a curse. Curse is he who hangs on a tree. He became a curse. Okay. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So Abraham had a blessing from God, right? Remember? Remember? God bless Abram to become Abraham, the father of many nations, okay? And all those who bless Abraham would be blessed and all those who cursed Abraham would be cursed. What is the blessing that comes down through the generations? Listen. In Galatians it says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The great blessing that Abraham received, Paul says, was the promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Hallelujah. Some people are like, I want to be blessed and wealthy like Abraham. But when you see Paul, he's saying that the blessing... In, in Christ Jesus is the promise of the Holy Spirit and you can receive this promise by faith. Amen. Some people say, like for example, when we pray for people for healing, some people say, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. Well, I guess I wasn't healed. And when they say that, I wasn't healed because I didn't feel anything. Maybe nothing happened. But other people, we've heard many testimonies. I didn't feel anything, 
but I received it by faith, and they had a miracle. Hallelujah. So faith does not come by feelings. Oh, I feel better. Oh, I'm going to push and see if I'm... Well, yeah, I feel better. Faith, healing comes by faith. So also the Spirit of God comes by faith, not by feeling. You can receive a powerful impartation without feeling anything. Other people feel fire and electricity and all sorts of things happening, which is wonderful. But receiving the Holy Spirit is by faith. Amen. Receiving healing is by faith, not by feelings. Receiving your deliverance is by faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you want to receive more? Let's hear some more from the Bible about receiving more, okay? When you are faithful in the little, the Bible says, Jesus said, that you will receive more, okay? Some people are like, I want a house. God, give me a house. And yet you're not faithful with the place you've got. It's a mess. You don't look after it. You want more? Be faithful. Come on. I want a better job. Huh? I want a better job. This one doesn't pay very much. Anyone thought that before? I want a better job. Doesn't pay very much. Huh? I need a better boss. This one's no good. And be faithful where you are so that he can give you more and promote you. He who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, look, you delivered to me. You gave me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents besides them. So how many has he got now? Ten. See, I've been doing maths with my five-year-old. <laughs> so five plus five is ten. What does the ten represent? Faithfulness. He was faithful with the five, and he got five more. All right, so he's got ten now. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your master. When you are faithful and obedient in the little things that God gives you to do, it brings joy to his heart. Amen. Then he says, Jesus says, For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have in abundance. The same is true in the spiritual realm. When God gives you something that is precious to him, and you are faithful with that. In the spiritual realm, he'll give you more. But if you live in fear and you think, no, 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 I couldn't do that. No, I couldn't say that. And you're afraid like the man with the one talent. He was afraid. What did he do with his one talent? Nothing. He stuck it in the dirt. He hid it. So when God speaks to you, act, obey, do as you're told. Turn to your neighbor and say, do as he says. And then he will see that you are faithful in the small, and then he'll start giving you more. Amen? Praise God. Jesus said in Mark 4.24, take heed what you hear. Take heed what you hear. How many people here are listening to secular music? How many people here are watching horror movies, are watching ungodly stuff? Take heed what you hear, Jesus said. Why? 
<clears throat> Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. What's the measuring? Your hearing. If you fill your ears and eyes, a big measure of junk, of trash, of garbage of the world, how are you going to hear God? And then, oh, I don't have time to listen to God. Uh, how do you listen to God? You read his word. I don't have time for that. I'm too busy watching my television or, or YouTube or whatever. So, to you who hear, more will be given, Jesus said. Should we read it again? With the same measure of listening you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you listening to God? What is the measure of your hearing? Are you spiritually deaf? Or are you listening to God? Because God gives more through hearing. God gives more through hearing. You read the word, you obey it. You hear, you obey. You are blessed not just reading but in obeying it. Amen? Now, so you're obedient, you're faithful, and God is giving you more. I want to warn you what will happen. As God gives you more, God will ask of you more. Some people think, oh, I just want more anointing. I want more power. And if God gives you that anointing, he will require more of you because he has given you more responsibility. In this ministry, there is tremendous responsibility. We have hundreds of people. Last weekend... In the first meeting, we had about 400 people online, about three or 400, 300 people in the room, about 700 people, and they've all come because they want something. They got cancer, they got whatever. There's more responsibility. With, with the anointing comes responsibility. Jesus said... Luke 12, 48, For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. God will require more of you. One day we will present before him, and if he gave us much in this life, we will have to give account to him on the final day for how we used what he gave us. Like the man who received the five talents and not the one. So it's a big deal when we ask God for more that we have to be responsible with what he gives us. Amen? So, and to whom much has been given, of him they will ask the more. What will happen? As the Lord anoints you, people around you will be asking Help me, pray for me, more and more and more. You watch what happens. Amen. Praise the Lord. You want more? You want more? There's responsibility. A basic process that we all need to go for, through to receive the Holy Spirit is the process of dying to self and living in Christ. 
because Paul says in Galatians that we're not only to live in the spirit but we are to walk in the spirit that is we have to walk in holiness to go deeper in the Holy Spirit is to go deeper into holiness maybe Moses thought he had some sort of relationship with God and then suddenly he sees a burning bush it's like he sees the anointing he sees this bush burning he starts coming closer Moses take off the sandals off your feet because the land on which you stand the ground is holy the Spirit of God is holiness people say I want more of the anointing but their life grieves the Holy Spirit how can you ask more of someone whom you are grieving hmm sometimes churches they want me to come and speak at the church but sometimes the churches don't even know that they are grieving the Holy Spirit so let's read we're going to finish up let's read in Ephesians 4 30 and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness wrath anger clamor evil speaking be put away from you with all malice be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you see if we walk in the flesh we grieve the Holy Spirit if you're bitter towards someone if you're un you have got unforgiveness whatever it is you're grieving the Holy Spirit you know one of the reasons why we just rent venues is because pastors will say to me things like why don't you come and speak here Mark we allow the Holy Spirit to move when they say that I know that they're grieving the Holy Spirit because who are we to allow God to move hello they don't realize it you, you can't control God you can't control the Holy Spirit you have to say Lord I am yours I'm your yielded vessel you know crush me I just want to live for you come Holy Spirit run the meeting just as you want do whatever you want praise God I was in a meeting and uh, I got up to preach and the Lord wouldn't let me preach he said go down the back there's a lady down there needs deliverance and I tried to preach he would not let me preach so I gave up walked down the back went to the lady and the power of God fell on her she started writhing like a snake and screaming got wonderfully delivered came back a year later saying that she was delivered I thought right I'm done I'll get back up to preach and I'm about to come towards the front and the Holy Spirit says that lady over there she has a tumor in the breast it's dangerous pray for her it's not my meeting it's not my meeting if I say well Lord no I, I, I'm not going to do that you know this is my meeting and you have to do things in your time and I'll do things in my time I'm grieving the Holy Spirit is that right so we have to surrender to him praise God praise the Lord I have a question for you what part of your life is not yielded to God you want more of God what part of your life is not yielded what part of your life is grieving the Holy Spirit all to Jesus I surrender all to thee I humbly bring amen so right now just close your eyes bow your heads whatever it is that's grieving the Holy Spirit in your life just yield it to him right now just yield it to him right now thank you Lord thank you father thank you Lord
Thank you, Lord. So thank you, Jesus. If you want to recommit your life to the Lord, you want to give your life to Jesus online or in the room, just put your hand up to him. I'm going to pray for you. Anyone else? One, two, three, four, five, six. Praise God online. Just people online putting their hand up. God loves you. Just say it in your own prayer and just say, Jesus, I give you my life. I'm sorry for my sin. I come back to you. I follow you. Thank you, Lord. You know, he loves you with an everlasting love. He draws you to himself by his love. When we ask his forgiveness, he draws us with everlasting love. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I will.